I'll never forget the time when uh, they were doing the uh, blowing of the skirt scene. She was on uh, a uh, subway grating, and they had these wind machines underneath. And the idea was they had come out of a cinema, and uh, she stops, and they were the wind blows up her skirt. Her husband at that time was Joe DiMaggio. And he was standing on the side with uh, a colonist, Walter Winchell. And Billy Wilder was directing the scene. It was uh, late at night, about midnight. And there was a huge crowd out there watching. And Billy, for some reason, kept having that scene shot over and over again. And every time he did it, the crowd, which was mainly consisting of men, started to cheer and scream and, and say more, more, more. And uh, for some reason, Joe became a little uptight on it. He was a little upset. And he just turned to Walter Winchell and he said, I've had it. He walked away. It was exactly June 1st. That was her birthday. And uh, when I arrived there, she was surprised to see me. She says, what are you doing here? I says, I came out to wish you a happy birthday. And George Cougar, there, who was directing a film, Something's Got to Give, said, well, I guess that's it for the day. And the crew rolled out a beautiful birthday cake for Marilyn. It said, happy birthday, Marilyn. As we all know, that weekend on the radio, the news came that Marilyn was sick. And Monday morning, the announcement on the radio said that she was not going to work. Her doctor had called in and said that she couldn't come in. The studio became very upset. They started giving out announcements to the press that Marilyn was not really sick, she was just... Uh, playing sick, she didn't want to do this film, and they said that she was putting hundreds of people out of work. And they threatened to sue her for millions of dollars that they claimed they were losing on this film. I get letters, it's amazing, the other day from a 17-year-old boy in Australia. He says, I wasn't even born when you took these pictures of Marilyn. I would have given anything, he says, to have known her and to have lived in those times. And it's amazing how people feel this way. I get letters from France, from Italy, Germany, Australia, South Africa. And they're mostly amazingly from young people and from people that do remember Marilyn and her age group. And Marilyn, you have really set this world on fire. We all love you and we miss you very much, but you'll always be in our heart. 